Now at 10, a mother's warning. How the Zika virus is affecting her little boy and what she wants you to know. And Harvey victims hit another wall. Did you get 236,000? No. It's not even close. Frustration mounts as the insurance checks roll in. Tonight, KHOU 11 investigates. We begin tonight with a neighborhood in the Memorial area that is worried after several cats were found mutilated then placed on front lawns. Lauren Tallarico joins us live from the Notting Hood Forest neighborhood with these disturbing details. Lauren? Yeah, Len, these details are pretty grim. So if anybody still has their kids awake and they're in their room, you may want to usher them out because the residents here say whoever is killing these cats is definitely human. There's a fear that hiding in this friendly neighborhood. It's escalating. Is a person doing very dark things. It's convenient to say it's coyotes, but it, it's not. Over the past few weeks, mutilated cats have been turning up on front lawns. Just found half of his body, so the other half was um, was not placed there. Including Shireen Greer's cat, Darwin. It's hard to think. Suffering. He'd been missing for nearly three weeks when a neighbor made that gruesome discovery. It's a very clean, uh, crisp cut. Um, it's not an animal bite. It's, uh, there was no blood. Security says another cat was found three weeks ago, cut in half on a front lawn, no blood. We need to, all of us, keep a our ears and our eyes wide open. This woman heads up security on the HOA and says they are convinced a human is responsible. I'm married to a doctor, so even my husband was very, very um, disturbed by the picture. This has happened in years past, too. Residents reported similar cat mutilations in 2015 and 2016. Harris County Precinct 5 is investigating. I just worry that it might spread to humans as well as animals. This is not normal. Whoever is doing this, there's something wrong with the person. So Harris County does have an animal abuse task force where you can report any type of cruelty absolutely without anybody knowing who you are. Just head to 927paws.org to do so. Len. All right, Lauren, thank you. A Houston area man had a close encounter with a shark on Crystal Beach today and he wound up in the hospital. Uh, we're blurring the photo of his injury, which is too gruesome to show on television. The man reportedly told paramedics, quote, the shark bumped me, then he wanted to taste me. Some swimmers we talked with today in that very same area say they may have seen it too. We were out there boogie boarding and I seen a really big dark shadow in the water. Um, I seen it through my polarized glasses and I just thought it was you know, nothing. So I didn't think anything about it until I find out there's been a shark attack. According to numbers, shark attacks are extremely rare in Texas, and we're told this injury is not life-threatening. New tonight, trustees at HISD have voted not to impose a pay freeze on teacher salaries. That means some teachers will be getting a slight raise next year. The cash trap district at one point considered freezing salaries at current levels. That led to a backlash and a packed board meeting tonight. Trustees agreed that teachers deserved raises, but many were concerned about where that money would come from. Now to some other stories developing tonight. Child welfare groups say they are investigating reports that a child died shortly after leaving an immigration and customs facility in Dilly, Texas. The allegations come from immigration attorneys who have not released the child's name or the cause of death. The U.S. Border Patrol has named its first ever female chief. This is Carla Provost. She's been with the agency since 1995. She made a name for herself by cracking down on corruption and mismanagement. Only about 5% of the 20,000 Border Patrol agents are women. And prosecutors say nearly a dozen hungry children living in a filthy compound in New Mexico were being trained to commit school shootings. Five adults are now facing charges, one of them suspected in the disappearance of his disabled son. Tonight, the official death toll from Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico is now 1,400. That story and more in our nightcap in 90 seconds. Nearly a year after Hurricane Maria slammed Puerto Rico, officials of the U.S. territory now say the death toll there could top 1,400. 
That would make it the deadliest hurricane in the U.S. since Katrina killed more than 1,800 in 2005. The accused shooter in the Santa Fe High School massacre has been indicted by a Galveston County grand jury. 17-year-old Demetrius Pogorchis is accused of opening fire at the school, killing eight students and two teachers and injuring another 13 people. It was a call for help, a pregnant mother and her baby in need. Frightening moments for the entire family. Paramedics here not only delivered the baby, they saved the baby's life. They also helped save the mom. She had two contractions, and by the second one, she was able to push the baby out. For several terrifying minutes, they worked on reviving her. Finally, baby Ruth cried. If you still have back to school shopping to do, tax free weekend starts tomorrow and it runs through Sunday. It means you won't pay sales tax on most clothing, shoes, school supplies, and backpacks under $100. Thousands of people have signed a petition pushing for LeBron James to replace Secretary of Education Betsy DeVos. This push comes just days after President Trump controversially tweeted Friday suggesting that James isn't smart. Earlier this month, the NBA star opened his own public school for at-risk students. Take a look at Walter and Kathy Abbott's. Their retirement home down in Rockport was slammed by Harvey. An insurance adjuster said it was a total loss. But when the insurance so check came, not, it was not, nowhere not near enough to cover the repairs. And investigative reporter Jeremy Rogowski discovered the Abbott family is not alone. Their policy is with TWIA. That's the Texas Windstorm Insurance Association. It's an agency created by the state to offer wind and hail coverage to homeowners on the coast when no other private companies will. But this insurer of last resort, some homeowners say, is putting them last. The roof came off and the wind blew all the water in. After Harvey ripped off part of the roof, you could look up and see the sky. And heavy rain ravaged the inside of their retirement home. A devastated Walter and Kathy Abbott thought, at least we're covered. You had insurance. Right. You paid your premiums every month. Yeah, I felt protected. That's the reason you buy insurance. But the insurer of last resort along the Texas coast, TWIA, was about to deal them another blow. While an adjuster said their home needed a complete gut and remodel, and the cost would exceed the policy limit of $236,000. Did you get $236,000? No. It's not even close. They sent me a check for $46,000. And you're thinking what? What in the hell are you doing? What TWIA did was ignore its field adjuster. Instead, the agency brought in a so-called building consultant for a second expert opinion. That opinion slashed the payment on the claim. Took with it parts of the port. And it's not the first time TWIA has done so. Just down the road in Rockport is Joey Park's waterfront home. They didn't seem to care. He was trying to cut the price of this claim. Park's claim on the home, which Twia's initial adjuster called not repairable and a total loss, was reduced from a policy limit of nearly $300,000 down to just $168,000. It was at, at just a point of shock. Can you rebuild for that amount? This is what I can do for that amount. This is what his home looks like nearly a year later. No flooring, no fixtures, no walls. It's uh, disappointing to say the least. It's infuriating. It's a total scam. It's a cheat on Texans. Attorneys John Black and Rick Daly are suing TWIA on behalf of scores of coastal Texas homeowners. The building consultants have, have one job and one job only, and that is to write an estimate that is as low as they can possibly put on paper with a straight face. The attorneys say that for 80% of Harvey homes that were initially deemed a total loss, a building consultant later wrote a lowball estimate to fix the damages. And how do they know? 80. They interviewed this TWIA supervisor. That in approximately 80% of the cases where the original adjuster recommended policy limits payments, the building consultant came back with an estimate that was short of policy limits. Correct. What does that tell you? It tells me these are people that are being cheated. This is not the way the system was set up to work. But when we sat down with TWIA's vice president. In no way, shape, or form do we use building consultants to lowball estimates. Jennifer Armstrong said consultants are used to gather facts and provide an independent evaluation about repairs. 
She maintains. We're committed to paying every dollar that we owe under the policy. When we pressed her on how total loss claims could be cut in half or more. That's a huge disparity. How can there be such a difference there? Well, that's a hypothetical and I wouldn't want to speculate. It's Just not a hypothetical. I can introduce you to the homeowners. Well, I can't comment about specifics. Armstrong says pending litigation prevents her from talking about individual cases like the Abbott's, but their message to Twia is loud and clear. It's unbelievable that somebody could be so disrespectful of other human beings, period. Twia's vice president points out the agency has already paid $1.1 billion in Harvey damages. And she says of all the Harvey claims, 76,000, only 3,200, around 4% have been disputed. Jeremy Rogowski, KHOU 11 Investigates.